Hi everyone, Brightbone here, back with another red team tip for the week of February the 14th, Valentine's Day week. Today we're going to be doing some stupid SSH party tricks. These are fun, right? SSH, which many of you probably already know this, can be used as a C2 server. It is actually one of the better methods of tunneling out of an organization and being encrypted and doing it in a secure fashion so you're not exposing client data. It's also one that works in almost every engagement I'm ever a part of. It just is almost always allowed out to the internet. So allowing port 22 out means we can use that to our advantage if we take over a host. So let's take a look at our Windows host and we'll just show some basic SSH tunneling through a jump box on the internet. Imagine I have a uh, droplet stood up in DigitalOcean or something stood up in AWS. In this case, I actually do have it in my local lab just for speed purposes, but it wouldn't matter. I could have this in any cloud resource and just have SSH available and reachable. So I've compromised a Windows host here. I have control over it, and I want to get its RDP session out to another connection, right? So I can remotely manage this system. But RDP, of course, in most cases, it's not allowed inbound. So I need to get it outbound, right? So what I want to do is I want to tunnel port 3389 through SSH, through my jump host that I have sitting out on the internet. And I can do that with an application called Plink. Some of you may be familiar with this already, but Plink is the command line alternative to PuTTY, the SSH uh, GUI client. Right, And it's very common, PuTTY, if you've ever used SSH on Windows, most of you have probably used PuTTY before. But Plink is the command line variant of that, and it will allow us to do SSH tunneling of any local port to any port on an SSH server. So we've got Plink here, and we're going to use our Ubuntu server here, which is 192.168.136.152. This could be any public IP. The IP doesn't matter in this case. We've got our password for that server. We have the port for that server. The dash two specifies that it is SSH version two, which is a more secure version. The dash four specifies that it is IPv4, right? Not IPv6. The dash N is for networking. And then the dash R is for redirect. And that's what we really want to pay attention to is the redirect. So this redirection is we're redirecting port 3389 on 127.0.0.1 to port 3389 on our jump host. So what this will do is this will create a local port on that host that it's listening for 3389. So let me go ahead and hit enter here and we can see it connect and it'll say access granted. Press return to begin session. So you have to hit enter twice. Once you do that, you now have a session out to the internet on your jump host. So you would want to then RDP into your jump host. Now you want to make sure you haven't done anything wrong here though. When you're playing with 3389, leaving it open to the internet is very dangerous. So you want to make sure that you uh, don't have that port open to the larger internet. So we'll just inmap for this one and two, one, six, eight, one, thirty six, one, fifty two. And we should only see port 22 open. And as you can see, we only see port 22 open. We don't see 3389 open. If you see 3389 open, you have messed up your gateway ports configuration in your SSH client. Make sure you don't do that. You will get your client for real compromised, not pen test compromised, right? So we have port 22 open. Now we want to tunnel our local connection to that. So we want to take a local port, connect to that jump box, and then redirect RDP through it. So to do that, we basically are going to use, I'll paste this command in just to make sure we got it in there. Actually, I can up arrow for it, I think. Yep, uh, so we're gonna do SSH-V for verbose, so you can see the N again for the backgrounding of the session of the network. Our local port is gonna be 33389, our local host is 127.0.0.1 and then 33.89. So we're connecting to, we're redirecting our port to the local host port of 33.89. And then we're going to hit enter here and we can see verbose gives us a lot of information. Put in the password. 
And here we go. We can now see local forwarding listing on 33 or 33389, right? So now if I come over here and I use X free RDP, I should be able to connect. Now, if you use some of the other connections or other clients for Linux, they may not work. X free RDP supports CRED SSP. And what CRED SSP is the certificate based encrypted version of RDP. I would recommend you use X free RDP. So now we're going to connect to our local host on port 33389 with our user Clint Barton at hacklab.com. We're just going to use dynamic resolution. But before we do that, I want to end map my local host, right? Let's just see, do we have a port open that is accessible by anyone for 33389? And we do not. So check these things as you're moving through. If we do a netstat dash a and t, we can see we do have it for our local host only. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll RDP in, and it's asking me for a password. It was also saying host to win10.hacklab.com. And this is probably gonna throw an error on my screen because it's gonna kick my other one off. Yep, and we now have our RDP prompt. So we can see we have tunneled through another host to get to the RDP session that we tunneled out. Adversaries use this technique. So let me give you a little trick to detect this before we move forward. I'm gonna release my RDP session here and I'll show you the event ID that you'll see when an adversary does this. It's very rare. So for the blue team, if I open event viewer here, And I'm simply going to come look in the security log for 4624. So we'll filter our current log. There's a lot in here, so it may take a minute. It's loading. And if it continues to load, I'll pause the video here until we can get it loaded or I'll jump over to my SIM system. Uh, there it went. Okay. So we're going to filter for 4624, which is successful logon, right? So within 4624, you're going to be looking for a logon type of 10. This logon type 10 is an RDP connection. But this RDP connection is going to, it's going to originate from a very strange place. It's going to originate from itself in a lot of cases, or 127.0.0.1. See this source network address? This is my connection inbound to it from the NAT. But in a second here, we should see one that shows 127.0.0.1. Let me refresh it real quick. Nope, that's the wrong thing. There it is, source network address of 127.0.0.1. Why would you ever RDP to yourself? You wouldn't. So this is a good way to detect when uh, somebody has used RDP tunneling because it is connecting to itself to connect outbound. Very strange. Uh, you can get some false positives with this, but it's a good thing to look for. Uh, you wanna make sure you're when you're seeing strange things happen in authentication logs, especially when it's a type 10 with 127.0.0.1, that you're paying attention because something strange is going on there. All right, so I showed you some RDP tunneling. Yeah, I've seen that before you're telling me. Well, I got something you probably haven't seen before now with RDP tunneling. So just to give credit where credit's due, uh, 
This is a blog post by Jeff McJunkin. And what I'm going to show you is the Konami code for SSH. This kind of changes the way that you can do tunneling because you don't have to establish the session with all of the tunneling built in. You can change your session midstream. This is great. It's like cheating. I can just SSH in and then I can redirect or do what I need to do right from the client right from there. And I don't have to set up a session with all of the long stuff and type my password again and do all of that stuff. So let me show you this. Very, very interesting. And I'll go back to those commands here in a minute. So we have our session going here with uh, our Windows 10 host it is connected back to our jump box. But now I'm simply just going to straight SSH in. I'm not going to use all of the commands. I'm just going to go in straight as Ubuntu user. So we'll go SSH and we'll go Ubuntu at 192.168.136.152. Straight SSH session, no tunneling commands. So I'm in here, but this is the neat part. If I hit shift tilde C right in a row, I get an SSH prompt. And from this prompt, I can change what I'm doing inside of this SSH session, including redirection. So I'll just show you if I do a question mark, you can see here are all the redirection commands. This is remote redirection. This is local redirection. Uh, the dash D is for proxy redirection. This is really neat. And I can track the sessions without leaving my current SSH session. I can just have a session open. So if I hit enter again, I'm going to get my command, but then I'll go back into dash C and I've got my SSH command and I can do dash L three, 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 eight, nine, colon, one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one and then thirty three eighty nine. So I'm redirecting my local port of three, 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 eight, nine to one twenty seven zero dot zero dot one thirty three eighty nine. And it says forwarding port. And I've still got my prompt. Neat, right? I bet you haven't seen that before. Now, if I come over here and I do my X free RDP, it asks me for the password. Oh, I typed it wrong. And there we go. We have our free RDP session. Of course, it kicked my error for the screen but we free RDP'd through this and I still have my prompt. Another neat thing you can do here is tilde and then the number sign and it will tell you, hey, I've got this redirection happening over here. Otherwise, you have to do this from the command line every time and switch a bunch of windows and do a whole bunch of dance. This is really cool from a, for, if you use SSH for tunneling all the time, this is really neat. There's some other things you can do here too. We can increase the verbosity. We can request a rekey. We can send a break. We can list forwarded set connections like I just did with a tilde and the uh, pound sign. You can background SSH while waiting for connections to terminate. You can get a different message. You can send the escape character twice and you can terminate a connection by doing just that, the dot. So I can terminate a connection without leaving my current session. So simply, I just SSH into the box down and I do dash L or dash R or dash D, do all of my redirection right there and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I no longer have to have four sessions open for all the redirection or Tmux things. So this is pretty neat. And I have a feeling that many of you have not seen this before, but uh, credit to Jeff McJunkin here. This is one I had not seen and I thought it was worth a demo. And that's it for the red team tip for this week. Thank you guys very much for watching the channel. Uh, the last video that I did on the uh, Palo Alto XDR bypass was by far my most power popular video ever. Uh, and if you want to help the channel, please post these things to social media. Post it to Reddit R Cybersecurity. Post it to Reddit R NetSec. Uh, post it on Facebook. Post these videos places to help the channel because I can't do that in a lot of ways, right? It, I have to be able to. I can only post at certain places. Uh, so if you like what you're seeing, put it out there for me. Once again, thank you very much and hack the planet to defend better.